Um, yeah. may maybe let's go back to Europe. That's a good idea. The <laughs> uh, because it's Europe. It to me is this kind of. I did a video about this uh, recently. It's Europe would have the power mm -hmm. to intervene and say like, stop it. We are not sending yes. weapons anymore. Amer um, NATO. We are now blocking NATO decisions, and yes. we are going to force. Uh, 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 some form of stalemate and we are actually going going to say like okay Putin okay fine uh, yeah. just stop it we do a ceasefire and then we do a real deal uh, the, the Europeans could do that but they don't uh, why because that is like let's, I'm really interested in sort of considering solutions because yes. I think there's a great lack of imagination among many people of how this would ever uh, be solved you know this is one of the things you'll hear uh, most uh Often I think, okay, yeah, okay. I also want peace, but yeah, what what can I do? What? So I think it's up to people like you and me to sort of be able to sort of imagine a path towards that. You know. Yeah. So what what is what are the maybe not the chances or the possibilities from Europe? You say we are capable. You say as Europeans of stopping this. So why isn't it happening at the moment? And how can we change that? Why why are the current leaders? Even though they seem maybe to me like a Macron, I mean he's sort of half-heartedly, eh? you know, he's he's he does support with weapons, but he sometimes makes uh, statements uh, saying, okay, we can't fight forever, etc. So how do you see that? Why why is our uh, the European leadership uh, not doing this at this moment? I I wonder about that. I mean, on the one hand, they did buy into this narrative i believe although this is a real question i have i don't know do macron do von der Leyen, do does schultz believe the stuff that that comes out do they believe this this lunatic narrative they m must know better and if they do then the question is why go along um one answer might be because they are politically weak so one thing mm. is the war, this war, the, the full scale, okay, two things. The full scale version of the war didn't happen until Merkel was out of office. And yeah. Merkel was extremely firm in the saddle yeah. in Germany, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think that this is a coincidence. I mean, mm -hmm. Merkel had the political cloud that she could say no to stuff that came from the yeah. from America, from the US, right? And she said, we're going to have this Nord Stream. We're yeah. going to do this. This is important for Germany. Um and other leaders seem to be quite weak. So it must there must be this possibility of pressure and just pure pressure. Is it like either you go along and even though you're a prime minister of your country, if you don't go along, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. And we will have... Yeah, but that, that's what, about, what I constantly wonder. What is this pressure? What Like we, we have, we are used to living in a world where the US is the superpower that can make and destroy everything, you know? So are we so afraid of 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 the of what can they do? Can they kill Schultz? Do they do? Are they all compromised in a way? Do they all have really comprom compromised uh, pictures of them or videos? And and can they bribe them in a way? I wonder about that, but it may be just the, the fact that it's possible. I mean, they were able to change a a a um, the president of Ukraine, right? Okay, so Ukraine yeah. was also highly corrupt, so maybe it's it's, it's yeah. a bit easier there. But um, I think. Uh, some of these leaders must feel vulnerable, and in this sense, it's actually better to go along with the with the general narrative. You know, it's it's you're just an, on the safer side, mm -hmm. and then you do that. Uh, and on the other hand, maybe good, a good part of them is just also ideologically captured. I mean, even Switzerland is now trying to to cooperate with NATO, which is like one of the worst ideas we've had in like two hundred years. But they the, the the leadership is is pushing for that because that's the new thing. <laughs> that's what everybody does. But it's for really Switzerland, they're so they're so secure. They so they have nothing to, to fear, basically. Of course. So they so, and they can they can rest on their history of being neutral and being sort of strong in that way. Why? Well, they, what? What's the? What is like? Is there also is there also threats in that in that way, like pressure or? No, no. There's there's a narrative of threat. There's a mm. narrative that the Russians could could march into Bern, and so mm. we need to to cooperate with NATO, which is absolutely stupid, of course. But it, uh, you know, Claire Daly put it quite well that yeah. that even the Irish they want to be a uh, best little Europeans in class, and I think mm. the Swiss there's 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 a good part of the of especially the political elite that thinks like this. You have to be a good virtuous 
um, citizen of this world, and therefore you, you do the virtuous thing, which is to support Ukraine. You have the flag in your in your profile. Um, you you must imagine it. This makes no sense from a national standpoint. One example, and which which directly touches me, um, when I fly flew from Japan to to Switzerland, it took two and a half hours more. It takes 14 hours instead of 11 and a half because we are not allowed to cross the Russian airspace. Why are we not allowed to cross the Russian airspace? I mean, Swiss air. Um, because yeah. the Swiss closed their airspace to the Russians. Yeah. And now somebody has to explain to me how a Russian airplane makes it to Swiss airspace without traversing the closed uh, European airspace. So taking over this sanction is a pure token, a token of we are good citizens. We are we are playing along, and of course, the Russians closing their airspace to the Swiss is much more hurtful to the Swiss than the other way around. But somehow, <laughs> there's the idea that, well, we do our part, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is of course a tiny little crap part, but yeah. it's it, it it feeds into this. So there is a psychological. So it's more it's psychological that. things. We want to belong to this club, and we want to be the good uh, the good participants. But is there there should be also some reflection? No, I mean some okay. What well, is this wise? And uh, there, there is. So the, the yeah. good thing in Switzerland, there is, and we have now a debate, and there is a new, new neutrality referendum that's going to come that uh, that should then uh, work against this. So there is a good part of the population that doesn't go along, and we have the political uh, tools yeah. in order to push back. But at the moment, the 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 the, the, the wave the wave mm -hmm. pushes in one side, and at the moment, like we on on the ground, we're still like like trying trying to not not be pushed back too too hard. And I think in the Netherlands, I mean, it was as you said, there must be also a good chunk of the population that doesn't yeah. support this narrative, but Absolutely. it's too little at the moment. We're just too few. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's interesting. Um, yeah, the Dutch situation, I would say, um, it is, it is, it is uh, the the people, as I said, who are truly concerned and understand the danger we are in together. Yeah. That's still small. Like we have a, a large group of passive supporters, let's say, but to make these passive supporters active supporters, that requires more, I would say. So, um, uh, and uh, the, one of the reasons is um, it, it's very fascinating why why it is the case, and I think there are several several um, uh, several reasons you can you can point to, and maybe it's the same in Switzerland. I don't know, but one of the issues is that um, the, the sort of the traditional left doesn't exist anymore. Yes, you know. Yeah. So the traditional left, which has in its DNA to be against war, I would say, like the socialist uh, um, movement used to be, um, it has disappeared. So what is left? It's made merely it has become liberal, you know. So actually, it has it has it has sort of retreated to some also equally important topics, but it has left another a very a large group of other topics so the, the important topics that they pick up are you know lgbt rights and 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 climate change okay that's fair that's good that you make your you know your point on that but they have left out they really sort of and they you see even a sort of you know they have left out the, the whole topic about poverty about um housing about equality about uh, equal chances on the on the job market about discrimination about and about war and peace. So like the, a very big chunk of, of sort of original left left thinking, left uh, left uh, um yeah moral uh, moral view of the world of, of you know that we should be equal and that we should it has all been left behind. And even if you, you hear the, the current politicians left of the left talk, they they even talk in a derogatory manner about sort of the lower class people, which is absolutely weird. And this, 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 this sort of so the the left wing has has become very elitist. You know, if you see in the rich villages, they all vote left, mm -hmm. which is very odd. And this makes this this uh, what this creates. Of course, this is an this is this is this is golden for the let's say the radical right. You know, and this is also odd because, like, they currently the radical right in in the Netherlands, they they say the right thing about Ukraine. Absolutely, they say the right thing. They understand what's what's wrong. And they see what needs to be needs to happen, but the, you know the sad thing is that if you read their their party party doctrine, you know their 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 what what they say they're gonna change in the Netherlands if they're gonna be the boss. It's it's all about stopping migration and it's all about um, protecting the Dutch identity and and sort of uh, against of course Islam and those kind of things. So that's their real cause, 
and then they sort of they they, they put the door open to to all sorts of of sort of discontents so about ukraine but also they did the same with corona so they let's see the, the traditional um uh, electorate of left is all going to the right and they say the right things but if you i i i let's say i have a sort of mistrust that they will actually do it because they they you know they're very critical always about the eu but they're never really critical about nato for instance and then you say that's like meloni you know that everyone thought okay she's going to be tough you know and she's going to create a change well yeah she's great about critical about the eu but not about nato and about the, the us so it's just doing everything uh, so that that's weird so it, it's I don't know. It's it's like a, uh, this is the very uh, strange political situation where the, the the left is super weak, and the right is sort of opening its arms to all these this this you know disaffected and and um, discontent left left wing people. Um, so it's it's like we and like it's also in the peace peace movement. It's like it's it's divided. It's very small and it's it's very small and it is and it is divided. You know, <laughs> so it's it's divided along left wing and right wing lines. So. It is. Uh, it is. I'm. I'm. St I'm still hopeful. I'm not. I'm not saying this because I think. Oh, this, it's hopeless. No, I think we can change this because of this large group of of passive supporters. So I'm. I'm actually quite hopeful that we can reach out to them all, and and left wing or right doesn't shouldn't matter in in, the, in this case. You know because because I think we we're all equally threatened by by nuclear destruction. So yeah. I think we we should we should forget this left and right. But it's. I'm just pointing out that this is the the, the situation that we have to start with. You know. Yeah. And maybe uh, I can point out one other thing, and that is that uh, the uh, in the Netherlands we have one big peace organization that is sort of the peace organization. Like if you talk about peace, oh, you you know everyone knows this organization. And what is it? What's the name? It's called Pax. Pax. And you know, I, in principle, I have sympathy for them because you know at at some other points they have very you know reasonable uh, you know state statement to make reasonable statements and sort of. But currently, um, they 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 are very much pro pro this war in a way pro pro fighting this war to the end from the NATO part, let's say. And this is very odd, and this is sort of because they sort of claim the space of we are the peace organization. They, I mean, I, I know a lot of ex members who actually they don't want to do anything with that anymore. But because they they have the name of sort of the other like, and they sort of are now the 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 guardians. For okay, the way to peace is war. Let's say, yeah, that that is sort uh, of uh, the, and, and therefore because they take that stance, like it's yeah. The, also, the media say okay, yeah, if Buck says it, yeah, then that's the way, you know. And and also other organizations that are you know more related to human rights or developments, they all look at Buck and they say, oh, okay, okay, that's the stand on peace. Okay, let's let's join that one. So that's a sort of a very a very interesting situation that we have to start with. Yeah. Yeah. So this is something that we are seeing, and I think it's um. It's maybe not that easy for for friends and colleagues from outside of Europe to understand this, but we have we had a big shift politically, as you just said, and 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 the left had lost a lot of its uh, a lot of what it used to do, and this leaves mm -hmm. us kind of puzzled. And we have the peace organizations, and we have large NGOs who kind of went completely the other way, and that is it, yeah. maybe one thing to learn, and also a way forward, at least for us who are like actually who actually care about peace not peace through weapons but peace yeah. through uh through talks is that um the this peace movement of the 1960s and 70s yes. integrated bit by bit into larger organizations it it, yeah. it 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 was part of the social democrats and the social democrats are a party then it, and then it came like pox and so on we have other such organizations and yeah. these organizations are apparently it's very easy to win them over with a narrative and co-opt them so big 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 countries and big organizations seem to be easily co-opted into doing the current thing be yeah. be the current leader of the current thing right and they they yeah. subscribe to that because they have so many members and they worry that if we do the wrong thing then you know so we are with the mainstream and yeah. one way forward to fight this would be to to make the conscious decision mm. uh, this time over the for the next 20 30 years we're gonna stay small we don't try to integrate. We try to cooperate, but not to integrate. So if we have many little ones, if then yeah. the next thing comes and a few fall away, we still have the others, right? And we yeah. we can we can regroup. And I yeah. think this regroup of as organizations, you mean, is important as organizations. Well, yeah. the big the big temptation for organizations is very simple: it's money. 
So yeah. actually, it's, yeah. it's super simple to buy an organization because they all like NGOs are not commercial uh, entities. So the government can just say, you know, you get a lot of money. We got this pile of money for you, and you please do this and that for us. You know, next thing you know, like uh, the, the organization that I was talking about used to be like a member paid organization, but, if, but now it's ninety percent government paid. So it's easy then to to fall into that trap. So that is one thing, and the other thing is. Um, like it, it, you see it more often in society. Like the, the very many, so let's say, real social movements that come from the grassroots, they have been either co-opted by the in this way by the government, and so just you know they're still NGOs, but they actually are just uh, just doing the work of the government. And um, secondly, also like if you look at to media, yet, yet there you see like market parties that have become sort of the owners of these media houses, you know. In the Netherlands, like all of our newspapers are owned by two media houses from Belgium, in, by the way. In Switzerland, it's four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you you yeah. still have four, but it doesn't really matter because these are commercial entities that don't read like every the goal of every commercial entity is to make money and not necessarily to like if if it's if it would be still like we used to have a very sort of uh, sort of polarized society before the Second World War. Yes, Protestant, Catholics, liberals, and socialists. You know those four main main uh, pillars of society, and you, these had their media. You know, and they were not they were not commercial. They were sort of paid by members. And you know, I don't say that the situation was ideal, but it was sort of it. It came it came from society itself, and it came it sort of it it gave the socialist or the liberal or the Christian Democrats perspective on um, on a, a world events. And now, sort of that perspective is is sort of is not in the hands of 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 the the social leaders anymore. It's 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 in the hands of commercial parties with interests that we don't don't know. So that's you see the similar. Uh, so the things that should be there f that are really from society that are sort of they they're not really from society anymore from the for, or from ordinary people. Let's say yeah yeah that's a, that's a very good observation. This is ex mm. exactly something that happened. The, the, a lot of the grassroots things were up mm. un, uprooted and yeah. are now given top down. And yes. even if they are not, there's not a cabal of people in the background. Yeah. But there's, there's the, the the institutional logic of these organizations then yeah. forces basically. To follow the narrative yeah, and then yeah. reinforce the narrative so you yeah. have a, a social feedback loop that then yeah. creates the wave that we yes. are now and, and everything that's not there is sort of suspect everything that's yeah. really truly social truly coming yeah. from society you're know, those groups which, you have to say to, to be know, suspicious of which yeah. is funny because the people like you and i they they yeah. tell us so yeah. how much does putin pay you yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it pocket, right? It's like yeah. okay, so but it's interesting that these people then think that the only reason why you why you why you yeah. don't go along is because yeah. somebody pays you because that's the yeah. only reason why they do yeah. what they do. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, like, I, I, as a question to you, um, like, we really want to. I, I see your videos are being watched already. Like. Uh, tens or maybe hundreds of thousands of times like a lot of times a few of them a few of them yeah, yeah yeah so that's already you have a great platform um i think uh my question is actually uh the netherlands we like we, our platform is still a lot smaller than yours but um uh i think we need we need to reach this passive supporters in a way you know yeah. we need to sort of uh and get, because it's we we can't wait for our politicians to to suddenly wake up and make clever decisions, you know. Um, so how how do you see that? How do you because don't we need to connect more? Don't we need to sort of how how do we do I do 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 you already think in that way, or are you seeing yourself primarily I, as an ac academic educating people, or how do you see yourself, uh, or what kind of advice would you have for people with that kind of ambition? No, I I do I do see that, and I'm. Um... I hate what's happening at the moment and I want to help change it. So there's no other way than to try to do something. And, uh, you know, publishing is mm. a feasible way because we one thing to keep in mind is, yeah, if we if we go into these larger organizations, we we put we put restraints on ourselves. Right. So we have to Absolutely. find ways to stay independent. My way of yes. being independent is being Absolutely. an academic. So I get paid by the university. I do Perfect. my research and stuff. And on the other hand, I also do. do, do I also do have my day activism. job, which keeps me independent. We need this. We need this. Yeah. But the, the, what we can do or what I wonder is so. um we have at least two groups. There's the, there's these people who are really disillusioned politically and who would like to have 
you know, political party or n real NGOs that they can support that then push for our uh, for what we what we are saying. And we have this other group uh, or, or the same group that's also really disillusioned with the media. So what I yeah. see right now is a lot of people going on like online and so on, and they try they look for alternative sources. And we have yeah. colleagues, you know, in Austria and here in Switzerland that build alternative like uh, news ho uh, homepages where they where they just publish all the things that don't get mentioned in the in the news space. But the problem is they're all small and as you just yeah. said like the platforms are small um, yeah. But if we start to integrate them, then we we would fall prey to the same problem as before. So one thing I thought we could do, especially if we if we manage to connect across Europe, is how about we try to syndicate our content yeah. and the mm -hmm. stuff I produce, the stuff you produce, we put yeah. it into a pot, and anyone can can for for just a nominal fee basically then use that on their own pages, and thereby we then pay for the syndicate. That yeah. that basically provides all of these alternative news sources. That way, yeah. we can we can reinforce each other without yeah. without controlling each other. Something like that might maybe yeah. make yeah. sense. We will talk about it after the video. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. I, yeah. I haven't seen it, but you know we have a lot of small ones. We have yeah. them. We have in the United in the US. We have organizations Code Pink and so on. And the yeah, thing is, yeah, yeah. there are many actually. There are many, and we can we can disagree with them, right? We can even have organizations that we don't fully support, fully agree yeah. with. But the fact is, we could still help each other in yes. certain aspects and topics. And if we had a syndicate where we, where then we you have like... information, and then that's of course it starts with information, you know, yeah. and starts with share critical, content. yeah, and critical thinking. But then also, like I think there's a next step, like there's seeing, judging, acting, you know, seeing what's wrong, judging, okay, this is wrong, and then acting. So. The action should be also sort of have a critical mass and sort of like the politicians should be aware that they can't just do things without sort of uh, with this disregarding what the people think, you know, because uh, so so I think we also should think about what's the next step. Is it going into the streets? Is it protesting? Is it lobbying? Is it, uh, you know, uh, sit ins? I don't know. I don't know what, but I think I feel it needs to go there uh, in order for, for politicians to change, because now it's just too easy for them just to, yeah. you know, uh, they're extreme. Most European politicians are extremely unpopular, but they can do nevertheless. They can do what they want, you know. So you know, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. We and we need to we need to break through that narrative and change it. You know, also yeah. Yeah. the what I would love is like having a peace, uh, uh, um, a peace sit in or a peace activity. Uh, yeah. physical somewhere in the capitals where yeah. we actively try to find Ukrainians and Russians who want to hug yes. or who want to who want to be together and us mm. saying these are our friends we, yes. me, we yes. must help our friends and we must help yeah. both of them and yeah. we do not distribute blame we yeah. we must you know if this was a street fight, if Russia and Ukraine were in a street fight, the obvious yeah. thing to do is well, to separate them, right? Absolutely. And then make them make up and have a drink together, right? And we are doing the opposite. Yeah. We are like pushing one of them even harder into the fist yeah. of the other. So, and, and the sad thing is we are pushing the little kid against the big hooligan. Yeah, yeah, we're pushing the little one. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 so uh, sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyhow, so what we need what we need to do is to re reinstate this idea that the Russians are our friends, the Ukrainians are our friends. Uh, mm -hmm. We are the friends of the, of of these people, and we want to help you to mm -hmm. to to be good together again. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, this is super idealistic, etc. But I think it needs to yeah, start it, from that point. I also learned from another uh, other people that I talk to, like, and I think we should do this more. And I'm also saying this to myself: is we really need to talk actively, look for the people who are spreading the, the narrative, the yes. war narrative, and mm -hmm. actually really engage with them. That's actually what I think we also need to do, like publicly, yeah. if we, if they want, because it's difficult, I know. But, um, but there's, there's an interest for that. I did a, I did an opinion poll on my channel and asked them, uh, ask my audience, should I talk to a neocon? Should I invite yes. somebody? I, I my... thoroughly disagree. And uh, seventy percent said, do it. Twenty, do it. Uh, yeah. more than please 70. do it. Yeah, I, I couldn't I, find I one so far. I, I tried to find, I, I tried to find some, but so far nobody said yes. Uh, actually, nobody replied. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i can mediate some 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 uh, do you know someone yeah I, it's hard because i i, I know from experience i i did a, a like just before the summer we did and uh we I, I tried to organize eventually we succeeded we had a parliamentarian who was very staunchly pro pro uh, war uh, another journalist also and and you know for me it's easy to find all, all anti-war people but you know, it was very hard to find the people that are you know 
all, all over television and the newspaper, it was very hard to convince them to participate in that. And I think they, they also have some, some, some reputational fears or whatever. But I think it's very important because otherwise there's a risk that we keep sort of talking in our own circles. And, yeah, yeah, we, as we're doing right now, right? We yeah. we, we talk, yeah. we, we agree, good, therefore, but, yeah. we, yeah. therefore we have agree, a happy, yeah. jolly time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, I think, I think, but there's there's ways forward. I'm just glad to to realize now that uh, we are starting to, 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 to connect little by little. I mean, also among the countries and among these grassroots, I do think this will be the beginning of, 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 of a new peace movement, yeah. but it will take yeah. time. It will it take time, and it's very it's, it's still insignificant right now. Right now, it, we yeah. have no impact. We have no, no. power. No. Uh, we are just we are just stunned, shell shocked from yeah. Yeah. this. Yeah, but it's slowly growing, and I see it's already different than a year ago. Yeah, it's already changing. So that's a good sign. True, true. So yeah. we need to push further into that direction, and that maybe with these uh, words of uh, encouragement, I would like to thank yeah. you, uh, Jakob de Jong. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk again. It's great to be in touch with you and uh, hopefully talk to you soon again. We will. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pascal. Mm -hmm.